Hi everyone. For this screencast, you need your four panel book and a pencil. The four panel book is what we created in class on Friday with the four panels that flip up. The directions for this screencast, you obviously watch it. You need to write notes on the inside of your four panel book. And if for some reason you run out of space, use a post-it to add additional information, or you may write on the back side of the four panel book, but not on the top of the panel that you open up. And make sure that you put your proper heading on the back. The first system of thought practice that you're going to be looking at right now is Confucianism. The founder for Confucianism is Confucius. The place and date of origin was in China around 550 BC or BCE. Confucianism is a philosophy, it is not a religion. Confucianism is a set of rules that people need to follow. Confucius created this set of rules for China because he believed that if people follow these rules that it would help make China a stronger empire and Confucius um, for a while did work for the government as he shared his philosophy. So some of the teachings and rules respect for elders. Confucius believed that people always needed to respect the elders because they had more experience. He did believe that uh, family played an important role, so he believed in duty to the family, meaning that you do anything that your family needs. Confucius also believed in education or scholarship. Um, you guys already know that girls are not allowed to go to school, but Confucius still believed that everybody, boys and girls, should be active in the pursuit of their learning. And lastly, Confucius believed that a strong society had people who were willing to serve the government. And that could be as simple as paying taxes, or in the case of the farmers, it would be building the Great Wall or building the Grand Canal, and not necessarily complaining about it. A quote from Confucius, I hear and forget, I see and I remember, I do and I understand. You don't necessarily need to write that quote down, I just wanted to share that with you. For the next panel, we're going to be looking at Taoism, um, also known as Taoism. Sometimes you'll see it spelled with a D, sometimes you'll see it spelled with a T. Remember when words get translated from one language into another, the spellings do get altered. The founder for Taoism is Lao Tzu, and you can see the three different spellings of his name. Uh, go ahead and write down all three because it just depends on what resource you're looking at. That will depend on what spelling you see. The place and date of origin for Taoism is in China around 550 BC. So around the same time that Confucianism was created was the same time that Taoism was created. So Lao Tzu and Confucius lived around the same time. Taoism is considered a religion because they do believe that spirits live in nature. Some of the teachings or rules for Taoism. Um, Lao Tzu believed that people needed to focus on the Tao or a way or path and if they did focus on that way that they would learn the appropriate way to behave and to lead others to find peace. Taoism also teaches its followers to live in harmony with nature and that means that they don't actively do anything that would harm Mother Nature or the animals and um, they don't believe in killing anything. Taoism also teaches its followers to be content with what they have. And a quote from Lao Tzu, Be content with what you have. Rejoice in the way things are. When you realize that there is nothing lacking, the whole world belongs to you. And remember, you don't have to write that quote down. That was just something I wanted to share with you. For the third panel, we're going to take a look at Buddhism. And from your blue comparing world religions chart. You guys do have some of these on there, but I am going to give you some more specific details about the teachings of Buddhism. The founder for Buddhism is Siddhartha Gautama. He was an Indian prince born into an extremely wealthy family. Siddhartha Gautama had not known of poverty because he lived in a beautiful palace behind these high walls. And one day when he left the palace to kind of go outside and look at the city, that was the first time that he actually saw poverty and sickness and death. And he was absolutely devastated because he thought that everyone lived in a beautiful home with a comfortable bed and beautiful clothing and as much food that anyone could want to eat. The place and date of origin for Buddhism was in northern India around 560 to 460 BC. Um, historians, they don't have an exact date of when Siddhartha Gautama uh, was born, so there's kind of that date range there. Uh, Buddhism is considered a religion, not that they worship um, any particular spirits, but they do meditate and they do believe that spirits do live, um, not necessarily in things, but within your soul. 
So in the teachings of rules and rules for Buddhism, um, there's the Four Noble Truths and the Eightfold Path. So as you guys take these notes, try not to write too large because this particular panel is going to get really full. So for the Four Noble Truths, this was something that Siddhartha Gautama believed that were absolutely true. Number one, life is suffering. Siddhartha Gautama believed that life is suffering, not that you suffer all the time, but that at some point you will suffer. He believed that suffering is caused by desire. You suffer because you want something that you don't have or something that you can't have. He believed that in order to avoid suffering, you needed to just stop desiring whatever it was that you wanted. And then to achieve happiness, Siddhartha Gautama believed that people needed to follow the Eightfold Path. So the teachings and rules for the Eightfold Path, and this is where it gets a little bit long, these are the eight ways to be happy. Right understanding, right thinking, right speech, right conduct, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, right concentration. And all Siddhartha Gautama was thinking when he put these together was that people needed to just try and understand people, to think good thoughts, to make sure that they watch what they say, to act in a kind way towards others. Um, in terms of right livelihood, he believed that people, when they make their money, they shouldn't be doing it at the expense of someone else. He believed that people should put forth the right effort into doing something, that people should be mindful of how they treat others and how they act, and also to have the right concentration or focus. And a quote from the Buddha, no one saves us but ourselves. No one can and no one may. We must, we ourselves must walk the path. Remember, you don't have to write that quote down. For the fourth panel is Neo-Confucianism. Neo-Confucianism was actually created under the Tang Dynasty. So they're actually given credit as being the founder for this particular philosophy. Neo-Confucianism was created to reduce Buddhism's popularity. Remember, China needed Buddhism or wanted Buddhism because they were going through the civil war after the fall of the Han Dynasty. Confucianism and Taoism didn't offer them the hope that they needed, but Buddhism did because Buddhism taught them that life was a cycle of pleasure and sorrow, that life involved suffering, but that there was a way to become happy. Neo-Confucianism served to strengthen the government because of the civil service exams. Uh, those scholar officials, actually the people who wanted to become scholar officials um, for the civil service exams had to memorize all the teachings of Confucius as well as all 30,000 Chinese characters. And that kind of goes with the idea of scholarship that Confucianism actually taught. The place and date of origin for Neo-Confucianism is China. Around 772 AD, this was around the time period that the Tang Dynasty took over. Neo-Confucianism is a philosophy. It is not a religion. There aren't spirits involved in this particular um, belief. Some of the teachings and rules for Neo-Confucianism. They believe that life in this world is just as important as the afterlife. They wanted their followers to, you know, concentrate on this world and not just think about what was going to happen after they died. Under Neo-Confucianism, they told their followers that people should take part in daily life, that they should help others or help out in their community, and it could also mean help the government, as well as to try and find peace of mind. Neo-Confucianism also incorporated some teachings of Taoism where it also taught its followers to live in harmony with nature. So these are just rules that uh, the Tang Dynasty kind of put together and called it this new type of Confucianism or Neo-Confucianism. If you look at the teachings and rules, you'll see that there are elements of Buddhism, Confucianism, and Taoism within the teachings. Now, the last thing that you need to do is illustrate the four panel book. Now, these illustrations are not going to be due until the following week, and it'll be as part of the agenda when the due date for the illustrations are due. So, first of all, you have to create an, an original illustration or symbol that goes with each of the four systems of thought and practice. So, you have to create symbols that go with Confucianism, Taoism, Buddhism, and Neo Confucianism. The illustrations need to be colored. The illustrations need to be hand drawn, but once again, if you want to take a picture from the internet and you want to trace it to you know make it yours look really nice, that's fine, but it needs to be hand drawn. 
You may incorporate traditional symbols from each of the systems of thought and practice, but the majority of the illustration or symbol needs to be your own work, meaning you, it needs to be original. And of course, be creative because you know that I like to be wild. Okay, and don't forget, the illustrations aren't due at this time. All you need to do is just make sure that you have all the notes down for the inside of the four-panel book for Confucianism, Taoism, Buddhism, and Neo-Confucianism.